Yes. Okay. So here we are. Um, to array jobs. So I guess we go like before. So let's look at the abstract here. And so what's an array yep. job? So array makes me think a bunch of things in parallel. And from before, I know it's somehow related to embarrassingly parallel. So how would you explain it? Yeah, so, so an array is basically like like what the name says, it's like a list of numbers, basically. Mm -hmm. And in this case, let's say we want to do a simulation with multiple different data sets. We have data set one, we have data set two, data set three, and so forth. We want to do the same simulation with, we have some something that we want to iterate over, basically. And all of these simulations would be independent of each other. So we have independent simulations that we can do, but we just want, want to do them all. And what we could do is we could write our SBAT script for each one, each simulation at a time. So we would have like in S, SBAT scripts mm -hmm. of, to run like serial jobs. But, yeah. but what we can do in Slurm, there's this feature called array where you can give uh, this Slurm comment that we previously already see called array and give it a list of numbers or different kinds of numbers. And then it will, it will launch basically one job that consists of multiple of these independent jobs. So basically it, it launches copies of the same job. Uh, but, but with the key difference that each job gets one number different. So okay. each job gets its own Slurm array task ID. So each one gets its own like environment variable, which is the number of the like that that job's number in that array. Mm -hmm. So that job's number in that like list of jobs. Yeah. And so this, each this variable yeah. right here, this runs ten times with input underscore one, input underscore two, and so on up to ten. Yeah. Okay. So so when the job is running. Like if we look at the minimal example script over here, yeah. uh, when the job is running, that number, the Slurm array task ID will go from numbers one to 10, uh, because we have specified there in the comment that we want to run an array from one to 10. And, and that number will change. And that number, then we can, we can like, for example, in that code, we can run input one, input two, input three, and they all run independently at the same time. Like, like the Slurm will try to allocate all of those yeah. into the queue and they will run independent of each other and in different computers, different nodes and whatever. And all of the other requirements that we have specified, if we require a certain amount of memory, certain amount of time, whatever, they are copied as well. Like they are mm -hmm. like basically, okay. like the yeah. rest of the script so... is basically copied for between all of the, like yeah. all of so... the jobs. So but the array index is just different. Yeah. So I run s batch once, mm. and it, but ten things come out the other end. Yes. Yes, basically. So yeah. we can do this, and and what what you can do then, like, or the, what is the the question usually is that okay, you have a number, like the array is a number, mm -hmm. and how can you like convert that number into something else? Let's say. Mm -hmm. A parameter or something. We'll go through a few examples of this, yeah. uh, but, yeah. but let's maybe we could uh, we do the example. Yeah, let's do the example. Okay, uh, and, and run that. There's some good questions in the notes. Maybe we can answer those first. Mm. Um, simulations relatively fast. So yeah, if the array jobs take a few minutes or less, then it's better not to have thousands of them try to group them together. And there's some hints about this later in the page. It's exactly like an overall for loop kind of thing. Mm. The number yes. assigned to the array randomly done. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means. So the Slurm array task IDs come exactly from this here. Mm. 
and you can skip values you can like you can choose different number ranges. You can do yeah. do it like you you can do like every fifth number or something like that. And it, you can there's different syntaxes you can use to yeah. which numbers you want to use. Yeah. But you you will get um, like each yeah. of these jobs will get yeah one of those numbers that you have yeah. specified in the dash dash array um, yeah. comment. Uh the array jobs result in multiple sessions. Yes. So they can run at the same time but they might run at different times and they're all completely independent and have, have no knowledge of each other yes um okay let's go on so if i scroll yeah, let's down look at the example where's the first example we get my first array job this yeah. seems like the place to start right yes okay. yeah if we look at the script so if you look at the script over here we have like a we have uh, the usual suspects. So we have uh, the first line, we have the shebang, shebang or how it's pronounced. And then we have a few of these comments. So if Richard, you want to open our yeah. editor and yeah, and copy uh, the script there. I've just realized I haven't cloned the HPC examples repository or gotten set up. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, I can while Richard is uh, copying the repository, uh, I can. Do, do, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know, Actually, do I... for this, you don't need need that. Yeah. Uh, for the next ones, maybe yes. Oh. Okay. What? Yes. So. So, okay, in the in the script, go. we have the time and the memory requirements at the start. So, uh, these are the usual suspects that we like always want to give, anyways. Yeah. And and after that, we have the output. And this time in the output uh, comment, we have or the directive for the dispatch. We have a few different characters there. So we have this percent capital A and percent lowercase a. And what these do is that because we now launch like multiple jobs at the same time, we don't want them all to write in the same output file because it would get really cluttered and it would be really hard to see what each of these would do. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is that we can divert each output into a separate file mm -hmm. where the capital A, the percent capital A is a, like a shorthand for the job, a job, um, job ID as a whole, like, like the whole array will get one job ID. So that will be the job ID for the array job. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, for the whole su slurm so, submission, basically. So basically, they all have the same capital A. Yes. And the lowercase and a is the number from it. Yeah, that's the slurm array task ID. So so each we will, will get, like if we submit in this example, we submit from 0 to 15. So we get 16 outputs when we calculate uh, add the, like them together. Yeah. Uh, so we get 16 output files in this case. And then in the example, we run this echo. And here, I'm just printing it out. Yes. Okay, does this look correct? Yeah, let's try and run it. Okay, I control X and Y and enter to save. If I list, I see array example. So I run with sbatch. Yes. So we do one submission, and now if you run Slurm Q, we can see hopefully oh, it already ran. Uh, the thing okay. you saw yeah, yeah. pending yeah, was we need something to, I have. Yeah, we, we we need to we need to put uh, maybe a sleep there. But but okay, it already <laughs> ran, and now yeah. we already see the output. So so uh, we see there that that. 
uh, we have generated like the overall job ID was four seven six six eight zero, and then we have from zero to to fifty in these output files. And if if Richard now looks at the output zero, yeah, it says you can zero. see that the yeah the task ID is zero, and if you pick let's say yeah one one is one and and so forth like you can notice that each process when they were running on each or each array task when they were running they all got a different number for the slow array task id mm -hmm. and and there was a question also in the chat that can you map this number into two two parameters mm -hmm. yes you can like you can uh, there's this um like you can you can basically <laughs> Whatever countable set you have, you can map into that. Like okay, uh, whatever, yeah, yeah. like two, two dimensions, three dimensions. The question is just like how many, how complicated does the thing start to be? And usually, like we 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 will look at few examples on what you can do with this or what sort of things you can do with this. But but in many cases, if it starts to get really complicated, the mapping, it's easier to just like give the number to your program and then write it in your program. Okay, what should it do with number zero? Mm -hmm. So so quite often, let's say it loads a line from a common, like a configuration file that and then loads the parameters yeah. from there or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So is that basically what there is? Do we, I think maybe below... Maybe we could uh, like run run the same example but with a sleep uh, in uh, there and just demo okay. just to verify that it actually yeah. runs on like separate jobs okay i'm pushing the up arrow key yep. to go up in history to find my nano command yeah i push enter so so what we get when we run this we get 15 different uh like individual jobs that all run uh, the same, ex uh, except the task ID is different. Yep. And what we, uh, if we, based on that Slurma task ID, we do something different then, mm -hmm. or use a different data set or different parameters or something, yeah. we will get 15 different results. Yeah. Okay. Should I do it? Yeah. Yes. Let's do it. Enter. Okay, I push enter and then I run slurm Q immediately. Yep. So here it looks like. Yeah, they all got running immediately. They're and... all running very quickly. And you can notice on the left, on the left you can see that they different have this, they have this underscore there where you have like the different array indices separated. So you have the same thing running with different indices. And on the right, you can see that the node, where the node list is, that some are running in P40, some are running in P41, and some were running in P43, I think, or something. Uh, so so the, the computers where they are running might be completely different because they are independent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but what, what this, um, using this array uh, thing, makes it possible for you to run a lot of simulations at the same time. And it also is very nice for the queue manager because the queue manager doesn't now have to consider each job independently. It, it can consider the array job as a whole. And it's, it's very much, be it's much better for the queue manager to, yeah. to do this, uh, yeah. for, for you to do this this way. You don't get, you don't yeah. accidentally like uh, cause like a denial of service, <laughs> at least yeah. a denial of service mm -hmm. by submitting like thousands of jobs. So yeah. many of our users might run arrays that have like hundreds or maybe even th maybe thousands of mm -hmm. jobs in the array. So if they want to do like a really big, lots of simulations, like different uh, random numbers or different parameters or yeah. something like that. So, so there's a question, does it run the same program 10 times? Yes, and it has, but your program has to be able to use this variable to do different things each time, if that's what you want. And below, I think mm -hmm. we have a bunch of examples of this. Yeah. So we maybe won't we should... really go through the examples, but maybe we can show the spirit of them. Yeah. For example, maybe we can show the the first two like 
like as this kind of like a, yeah, like. Yeah. So here we see it's the array job. There's 30 things in the array. And I see there's some application that says input. And here, every program will take a different piece of input data. So if you have your input data all numbered, then that's relatively easy. Yeah, and if you if you scroll a bit down, there's like two examples of how can you like map those like numbers into some parameters. Like for mm -hmm. one example is that you can you can use this case case uh, structure yeah. in in Bash uh, to to do like if the slow yeah. task array task ID is something, uh, set the seed in this case to be some other value. Yeah, and and there is. Uh, also below there's an, another example uh if where you can use if you don't want to write you can write it a bit cons more concise okay. like you can use this bash array mm. like this is a different array than than the slurm array we are talking about it's the basically bash has this list or all this kind of like an array structure mm -hmm. so you can you can list the numbers there and then yeah. pick from this array uh, that specific number, yeah, uh, based on the index of the and, like there. And I guess the whole thing could be done in Python, basically, where you give yeah. a single number to your Python or R MATLAB program, whatever, mm. and internally it maps to whatever parameters it's supposed to use. Yes. yes. Okay. In in it, yeah, you can also like read a line from a file, like. Mm. Below this uh, example, also like if you want to write your different parameters in a file and then read it from there. But maybe we should go into exercises and let people try them out themselves. Yeah, I agree. There's a little bit more here you can read yourself. So for exercises, mm -hmm. what should we recommend people to work on? Uh, I would probably say that the the exercise. Uh, XS1 would be probably best. So you can choose whichever of these previous, like these examples that we provide in the page and try to give this pi, uh, pi that pi, uh, different seed numbers. So you can try out one of these exercises. I would say that run one of these at, yeah. like at least and try it out. Yeah. Uh, also, there was a good question. What is the difference between job and a program? Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. so job in this case, like often refers to Slurm job. So, so basically, yeah. like an allocation that Slurm needs to fulfill for you. Mm -hmm. So, so when you submit with Sbatch some script, then Slurm thinks of it as a job that it needs to do. Like I need to do this thing, okay, yeah. <laughs> and and if I need to execute this thing. And if you give it like an array job, you say it, it knows that, okay, I need to execute this like hundred times, but with different array index, mm -hmm. uh, like each time, like it will, that, that's a slurm job. And, and, and then that, that job can con like inside the script in that job, mm -hmm. uh, it can have multiple programs that you run then, mm -hmm. um, one after the other. Yeah. Okay. And how long should we give? I guess this has to be combined with the break because it will be break time. So assuming people start 10 minutes from now after the break, should we give 20 minutes maybe? What do you say this is the most important one so we yeah. should give the most time here? I, I think it would be good to have enough time to, to really yeah. test out these examples because like like this is something that can give you a lot of power with with minimal changes to your code mm -hmm. like and that's why uh, this is very like very good to learn because you can then utilize it in multiple different ways so yeah i would say 20 minutes at least yeah okay that sounds good so i wrote down um yep until, yeah, until 20 20 pounds so that's... and do ask the questions it's, it's very good to yeah. have have the questions in the notes yeah, this is the most important interactive lesson we're doing today, so.
Okay. Yeah. See you in half an hour. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Hello, we're back. And there have been really many very good questions here. And I think most mm. have been answered. Mm. There's a good question about how does the program understand Slurmer by task ID? So this is called an environment variable. And it's not specific to Slurm. Environment variable is the thing which all Unix and probably Windows programs have a concept of, and many languages can read them and get the values. We're showing how to do it with Bash, but there's other ways too. Yeah, we we will quickly mention when in the next session that we start soon uh, how how you can like c calculate or get the CPU number, how many CPUs you have allocated in the in the script. Uh, like in, in your code, how you yeah. can get that number. And you can use the same kind of structure for the array ID mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. There's a good thing here about confusing terminology. And yes, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is to run it several times and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And and also, I would say that, like, like look try to look beyond the terminolo terminology and look at the functionality <laughs> like mm. uh, like like all of these have so many like conflicting terms that it's it's very hard to keep it in check like even in speech like we might <laughs> yeah, use confusing yeah. mm -hmm. terminologies all the time like that that are like not correct because like there's so many yeah. different terms but what i think the most important thing is to keep in mind that okay like you have this workflow that mm -hmm. you might write your a serial job you might do an interactive first like interactive job run your program then you write it into a serial script mm -hmm. and then when you have run it through the serial as a serial script like we did yesterday after that you want to do it with let's say multiple parameters or something so then you add the array constructor mm -hmm. and then in your code you write some way that okay it understands that there's different things that it needs to do yeah like there's multiple ways of doing that. And usually it's mm -hmm. a good idea to recommend or recommended way is that first you launch like one array job, like, I mean, like one mm -hmm. array index. So let's say array equal, uh, that's just array equals zero. So you basically launch, it would be basically the serial job, right? Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. because you're launching only one of them and you see that, okay, did it work correctly? Mm -hmm. And then maybe you launch the array that that's just array equals one. And you launch the next one. Okay. Yeah. And you see that okay, did it do the different thing that you expected? And yeah. then you launch array from zero to thousand or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because so like like so so you basically like copy paste the same same code yeah. without doing the copy paste and 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 that's yeah. this kind of workflow. Once you get hang of that, that is the most important thing. And how you call yeah. it is like it's not the most important issue, I mm -hmm. would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what's coming up next? Um, do we do some examples yeah. of the array jobs? Um, I think- Or should we go on? Um, I think we, uh, we should move on because we have a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. So, okay. uh, but um, so yeah, I so maybe we should- to my screen. So the shared memory parallelism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.